But if he did repent, he was called a coward. So if he didn't repent, his family did. None of us are going through that. None of us are experiencing that type of hatred. That type of fear and dread. Maybe we need a good play or a good invader. The reality of how sinful we are. When we look at ourselves, we're so concerned with our own depravity, we have no time to condemn someone else. That's who we are outside of Christ. We are worldly. Our name is not God in altogether saints who never sin, but rather bound slaves of our worldly desires and passions. We are not saved. We are captives. So may the Holy Spirit grant us humility to know and to feel, to actually experience our utter depravity and bring us to repent of our lusts and love for the things of this temporal life. Because that's why we celebrate the name of Jesus at his circumcision. Because we already knew his name, right? Gabriel had said his name to Mary and to Joseph and even defined it. It says his name shall be Jesus. Right? And is this the first time we've heard the name Jesus in the Bible? Is this the first time? No! We heard it in the Old Testament. What's Jesus' name in the Old Testament? Where do we hear it? We hear it in the Pentateuch, right? His name is not Jesus there, but Yeshua. Joshua. Right? It is not Moses the law, or Aaron the priest who brings them into the promised land, but Joshua, the deliverer, the savior, the rest you were, delivers the children of Israel from their captivity into the promised land. And what river did they cross to enter into the promised land, everybody? The Jordan River. So we know that this name Jesus means Savior. It means deliverer. It means rescue. But from what? And who is he rescuing? I remember when I was at, in Illinois, I took grad classes, and the professor was a circular humanist. I like saying it that way because he wouldn't just say I'm an atheist. You have to be a secular humanist. Because that makes it intellectual. So he's a secular humanist, and they celebrated Christmas. But of course, he was a secular humanist, his wife was one, and somehow his, his five-year-old children were educated secular humanists as well. And, and they're looking at the Christmas tree, and one of the children asks, What where do we correct that I can't end in a preposition? From where does this holiday come? Meaning, how do we get this holiday? And they respond, Well, some people believe that Jesus came to save. And the response is, save them from what? Dinosaurs? No! And of course, they didn't continue to educate their child what the Christian faith actually is. But what did Jesus come to save us from? He didn't come to save us from some weird thing like that. He came to save us from sin. For Jesus is our Savior, who helps us by doing what we can't do. In his circumcision, he publicly placed himself under the law for us. He took our place and kept perfectly what we break constantly. He walked in joyful obedience to every command of his Father for us so that we, so that when the time came, he could make the only pure and perfect sacrifice for us. For Jesus, our Savior, came to redeem us from the curse of the law by becoming the curse for us. And this is why, I said it in early service, and I'll say it again. This is why I love, love, love having a Lutheran organist. I love it. I love it. Why? Because they pick good Lutheran hymns like our sermon hymn. When you actually hear what you're singing and read it and contemplate it, it proclaims to you that right here on the eighth day of his life, outside of the womb, at his circumcision, Jesus begins to experience the pain he actually begins to experience the pain that he will suffer at Calvary. What do you and I do when we feel too much pain? What do we do? We give up. Like in a couple days, some of you, not all of you, I know I will, some of us are going to adopt one of the biggest sacrifices that can ever be done. We're going to go on a diet. And thinking, I'm going to do this and lose tons of weight. You know, I'm going to eat my greens, I'm going to eat my fruits. Some fruits, not all, not the good fruits, life, but the bad fruit, you know, we, you know, I'm going to eat my lean meats, I'm going to do good things for myself, but 
what happens when it gets too tough? What happens when, when the salada salad isn't that appealing, but the Whataburger patty milk is calling my name? I don't, I give in, I don't keep going, I give in, I give up, and I eat it. We don't continue going when the pain is known, but look at Christ. Christ knows, he experiences the pain in eight days in his circumcision, the pain that he will suffer on the cross for us. And does he say, nope, not going to do it, it's too much. No, he keeps going. And from that day until 33 years later, Jesus every day knows the pain. Not that it's going to come, but it's there. Experiencing it every day as he goes. The only thing I could possibly ever compare this to is labor and child. There's no other type of pain you know because at the end, what comes? Joy that a child is born. Christ suffers the pain because of the joy of who will be born by his death. Children of God. For once there on the tree, the law came and called Jesus, not pure son of God, but came and called him by your name. And mine as well. The law came and called him covetous Chris, perverted Pete, and doubted Doris. The law called him every name in the book, every sinner, every sinner. And what did Jesus do? What was his response? I mean, what do you and I do when we're blamed for something we didn't do? I see this all the time with my sons, right? If one of their brothers did something that wasn't their fault, what do they say? They don't go, it is I, Father, blame me. <laughs> No, they go, he did <laughs> Boom. I mean, that's what we do. We don't take the blame for something, especially if we didn't do it. We pass the buck to somebody else. Even if it is our fault, we do that. Is that what Christ did? Everyone say no. No, he didn't do that. Instead of justifying himself and saying, no, it is not I. Right. I am not the sinner. I am the sinless. Instead of doing that, justifying himself, Jesus justified us and extended his arms out and cried out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus let himself be accused so that we can be set free from the curse and condemning work of the law. Jesus bound himself to the condemning voice of the law so that you and I, though guilty, may hear instead the peaceful voice of the gospel. That our sins are forgiven. So now, my friends, what's your name? I mean, outside of Christ, it's still sinner and those sins, but you are not outside of Christ. You are in Christ. So what is your name? Well, your name is no longer sinner, good for nothing, failure, no. You aren't named according to your actions and your work. But rather, you are according to Jesus' actions in life and work on the cross for you. Because of Jesus, you are called Christian, God's child, his dear friend. You are not named sinner, but called saint, pure and perfect. You are not called failure, but named by Jesus as his own prized treasure and possession. For think about this. Jesus knew the pain that was coming in his circumcision, and yet continued experiencing all the way to the cross and never looked back, never turned around, never said no. Think of this. Jesus knew then what he knows now and will know, how much sin you will commit. He knows how sinful you can become. And does that stop him from forgiving? No. Jesus knows what he has to bear for you. He knows how much he has to forgive. He knows how dirty he has to become. He knows how deep into the ditch he has to go. And he's free. And he will never stop forgiving you. Jesus is your Savior. And he rescues you from sin, from eternal death from the burdens of this life, and from the terror of the devil. Jesus will always be your Savior, no matter from what or from who you have to be rescued. No matter what sin you've committed, He will forgive it. He will rescue you. Jesus is your Savior, your helper in every time of need, your friend through thick and thin, your physician.
position of body and soul, your advocate, your defender, your Lord who claims you as his forgiven child from here until all eternity. Be at peace, my friends. You are not the sinner. You are the saint. You are God's child. You are God's friend. You are not destined for punishment but destined for joy in the eternal dwelling spirit. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.